This is going to be a very interesting video because this is a very interesting device. So this is a laptop, but at the same time it's also a tablet and it's made by Google. And it costs a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds in the UK, so it's not cheap. It's called a Pixelbook and this is my in-depth review. Okay, so what is it? What can you do with a Pixelbook? Well, first things first, this is a Chromebook. So some of you might be familiar with a few operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, and a few distributions of Linux, maybe Ubuntu, Mint, maybe from Fandora and so on. Now, these are desktop operating systems. And then you also have a few well-known mobile operating systems such as iOS and Android. Now, Chrome OS, which is essentially what a Chromebook is running, is sort of like in between a desktop and a mobile operating system. So Google is calling it a desktop OS, but it's, it's not really. Uh, but at the same time, it's not really a mobile operating system either. So essentially it's in between. Now Chrome OS was mainly designed for the web. So the main app that you would be using here is Chrome. So everything that you do on this computer will be web-based. So the apps are actually called the web apps, which I'll get to in a second. And Google actually sells a few Chromebooks. So this is not the only Chromebook that they sell. And Chromebooks have actually started exploding. Well, not literally, but they actually sell like hot bread and education. So in schools and universities, I mean, you can get a Chromebook for 200 pounds or sometimes even less than that. So it makes a lot of sense for students than even an iPad would, which is you know much more expensive. It doesn't have a physical keyboard, doesn't have a touchpad. So it's a bit more difficult to use and to type on when you have to do a lot of typing in class. But here's the thing, Google sells a lot of Chromebooks, but this one, the Pixelbook, this was not only designed by Google entirely, but it's also Google's most expensive Chromebook yet, starting at $1,000 or 1,000 pounds in the UK. So here's a few things that I really, really like about a Pixelbook. So the design's amazing on this thing. It's really well built. It's actually made out of aluminum and the keyboard has this rubber-like texture that feels really, really nice. Uh, the keys are lowercase, interesting enough. Uh, but they're very nice to type on, very easily to type on. They're also backlit, so you can see them at night, which is really convenient. Now the trackpad uh, is usually bad on most laptops, but on this one, it's actually surprisingly good. Uh, it even has these resting pads for you, uh, for your palms, which are made out of uh, rubber. And then on the back, you kind of have this pixel phone design. It kind of reminds me of the original Google Pixel from last year, rather than the Pixel 2. But overall, it looks, it looks really, really good and well made. So it's comparable to Apple's MacBooks and Microsoft Surface Books in terms of the build quality and design. So I have no complaints here at all. I also have zero complaints when it comes to the flexibility of this thing. So similar to Lenovo's yoga laptops, the Pixelbook has a 180 degree hinge, so you can use it in four modes. So the first one is called laptop mode, which is you know pretty straightforward. But then you can also fold it, uh, fold a keyboard, and you can use it as a tablet. So this is how you would use something like an iPad. And then you can use the keyboard as a stand for viewing content. This is really useful to have. And then you can also use the fourth mode, which is called tent mode. This is good when you want to type on a display, which by the way is touchscreen. And of course, uh, you know when you don't want the display to wobble, you use the tent mode. Now apart from the flexibility pun intended, it's also very light and very thin. I mean, this is one of the thinnest laptops that I've ever used. It actually feels more of like a thicker tablet rather than a thinner laptop. That's how good it feels. And it's also very light, so you can easily put this thing in your backpack and completely forget about it. So overall, great design, outstanding build quality, and Google has also paid a lot of attention to detail, such as if you take a look at the charging indicator, you actually have one on either side of, uh, of the Pixel Book, and these ones actually glow when the device is in sleep. So I love it. But unfortunately, there's a lot of things that are not that great with a Pixel Book, and here's a few. So first off, the display. So the display is a 12.3 inches Quad HD display, so 2400 by 1600 resolution and 235 PPI. So it's a good display when it comes to resolution, but then when you compare it to something like even a 12 inch MacBook's display, Yes, I mean, this one is a touchscreen display, which is a huge advantage, but for some reason, Google added this anti-reflective coating, which adds a ton of grain to the display. So even though the display should be just as sharp as the 12-inch MacBooks, it's actually very grainy and foggy when viewed up close. And then also, it's not as bright as a MacBook display or even an iPad display. It's only, it's only 400 nits, which is a bit strange. And then uh, it's also extremely reflective. So even though it does have a anti-reflective coating, this thing is crazy uh, reflective because the display is actually not laminated on the Pixel Book. And then the viewing angles are not great, they're okay. And then the colors are okay, they're not amazing. So the display is overall okay. 
it's not amazing. Then something interesting about a display is actually the aspect ratio. So this is a three by two aspect ratio display, which is strange because we haven't seen this aspect ratio for, I don't know, like 10 years on laptops. But in this case, it actually makes a lot of sense because you will be using this as a tablet as well. So you'll actually need the extra vertical screen real estate that this laptop has to offer. Then we have the speakers. The speakers are the speakers are bad. So here's the thing. The iPad Pro speakers are better than this. Uh, they're much like significantly better. It's not really loud. And then when you use it in tablet mode, the speakers are basically blocked. So yeah, speakers are not great. And when it comes to the front facing camera, this one's horrible. So this one, the footage looks like 480p. I'm not even joking. This is one of the worst front facing cameras I've ever used. It's even worse than the 12 inch MacBook one. And that's surprisingly bad by the way. So yeah, front facing camera and speakers, pretty bad. Then something that's actually really good is the performance. So the Pixel Book can be configured with up to an i7 Cabby Lake processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, something that I haven't seen a single tech reviewer or tech website mention is that, you know, it's obviously an i7, but you have like tens of different models of i7s. So this is actually the Y series Intel processor. So essentially it's the third generation Intel Core M chip. So uh, these are actually fanless chips and they're significantly weaker than a 2017 iPad Pro. So here's the Geekbench scores, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah, the 2017 iPad Pro and even a 2016 iPad Pro is much more powerful than the Pixel Book. But probably what's by far the Pixel Book's Achilles heel is the operating system. So since this is running Chrome OS all the time, well, all the apps that you have on this, you know, YouTube, Google Docs, Google Drive, everything is web-based. So essentially the apps that you see, they're essentially links that when you click, they take you to that specific website in Chrome. Okay, okay, Daniel, so why on earth do you have the internal storage then? Why up to 512 gigabytes of everything you do is web-based? Well, you we actually have a file manager or a file browser, and you can actually download stuff that you need offline. And speaking of offline, something that I really like about the Pixelbook is that Google Drive and Google Docs are fully accessible offline. So you, you have this uh, on the mobile versions of the apps as well. So you can choose to have certain documents saved offline, but on a pixel book, you don't have to do that since everything is automatically saved for offline access. And when you're back online, the progress is safe. So that's good, but this is still a Chrome machine. So think of it as your own computer with just Chrome installed and nothing else. So you can forget about Photoshop. You can forget about video editing. You can forget about, you know, playing games or anything apart from using the Chrome web browser. Well, that was actually the situation until Google decided to integrate the entire Google Play Store on Chromebooks. And this is huge because you can run essentially any Android app on this thing. And this is huge. So you just open up the Play Store and you can download anything that you wish. So this means that, for example, you can use the desktop YouTube app if you prefer using that. But then when it comes to Netflix, when it comes to watching Netflix, you can install the Android app since you can download movies for offline access, which you cannot do on a desktop app. And same goes for everything that you do. So you can basically choose between a website, the website and the Android app. This thing is huge. So no one really talked about this, but this ecosystem of desktop and mobile apps is actually exponentially better than Apple's or even Microsoft's uh, because they both have their own app store. So, you know, the MacBooks, they have the Mac app store, but even that's extremely limited when you compare it to uh, the iOS app store or the Google Play Store. So having both web and the Google Play Store into one device is amazing. However, I actually use Google Business a lot for running my company, managing all the data. Everything that I do work-related happens on my Google Business account. Now, for some stupid reason, if you have Google for if you have a Google for Work account, the Play Store doesn't work. I'm not even joking. So you cannot use Android apps on this thing if you want to use it for work. I mean, what is isn't this the entire point? The Pixelbook replacing your work computer? Uh, well, it, you know, apparently it's not because you cannot have the App Store, the Android App Store, if you use this thing for work. That's restricted. And you also get a ton of other restrictions, such as, for example, you cannot even use the Google Assistant that a Pixelbook comes built in with, by the way, with a business account. Now, luckily, I did find a workaround for all this, and that was actually creating a default user account, so a personal account. And this one actually lets you add the Play Store, and then you can add the business account inside that personal account. But for example, if you want to se separate the two, if you want to give your employees a few Pixelbooks just for work, they would actually have to log in with their personal accounts first with all of their social media stuff and personal emails and so on, which, you know, this is completely unsuitable for work. This is 
not how it's done essentially. Now I'm pretty sure that this will be fixed in a future software update. I don't know how many months from now, but at the moment, if you plan on using this just for work, it's impossible, at least not without being restricted to just like, I don't know, 30% or even less of what this device can actually do. And then there's a few other things. So the Pixelbook actually supports a pencil. So it's called the Pixelbook Pen. I don't personally have it, uh, but from what I've seen, you actually have to press quite hard for it to register a touch. And it also requires physical batteries. Like what? Okay, so as a conclusion, what do I personally think about the Pixelbook? Well, honestly, the Pixelbook is a far more capable device than an iPad Pro is. So the fact that you can run both full Android apps and you still have access to the full desktop web apps, I mean, yes, you can do that on the iPad Pro as well. You can get Chrome and enable uh, request desktop sites, but with the Pixelbook, you get access to that so, so much faster right out of the box. And then another reason why this is a far more capable machine than an iPad Pro is the fact that you can even connect it to a monitor. So yes, you can attach this to a 4K monitor at 60 Hertz. You can connect USB drives thanks to the two USB Type-C ports. So you can you get much more functionality out of this than from something like an iPad Pro. And then finally, it also has a built-in physical keyboard and a touchpad as well, both missing on the iPad Pro. I mean, yes, you can buy the Apple Smart Keyboard, uh, but if you attach that to the iPad Pro, it's thicker than the Pixelbook, by the way. And you also have zero adjustable angles, so it's essentially fixed. It's not like a laptop, you cannot adjust the hinge. And overall, it's a horrible experience when it comes to, when compared to the Pixelbook. But considering that this thing costs a thousand pounds, which is significantly more than an iPad Pro and already in the MacBook and Surface territory, honestly, I have zero reasons to recommend this over a Surface or a MacBook. So I'm not saying that a Pixelbook is bad. It's actually a really good device. It's better than the iPad Pro overall. But if this was 400 pounds or 500 pounds max, I would say go ahead and get it. But considering that it's more than double that, honestly, just get a Surface Book because that's, that's, that's the best deal, essentially. Getting a Surface Book, not a MacBook. The MacBook's essentially more expensive, but a Surface Book is a really, really good deal because you can run full desktop apps on that thing, Photoshop, CAD tools, whatever you want, uh, you can do that on, on the Surface Book. It's also touchscreen, the keyboard is better, so the display is better, performance can be better if you upgrade it. So overall, the Surface Book is a much, much, much better device than the Pixel Book, which unfortunately is still restricted by the operating system. But yeah, other than that, definitely uh, subscribe if you want to see more truly unbiased in-depth tech reviews like this one. And also don't forget to turn notifications by tapping on that bell icon so that you get notified whenever a cool new in-depth tech video comes out. And then let me know in the comments, what do you personally think about Google's Pixelbook? Do you, do you think you would find it to use or not? Honestly, this would be the perfect machine for me uh, when it comes to scripting these kind of videos and writing everything down. That would be, this would be the perfect machine. But then when I want to do something other than just scripting, you know, I need something more powerful, obviously, which this isn't, isn't the case. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this. Feel free to give us a like if you have enjoyed it. Let me know. It took a really long time to make, uh, so all of your feedback is really appreciated. Uh, let me know in the comments what video do you want to see next. And this has been pretty much it. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Sin of Tech, signing out. Cheers.